Ford Kroller is a central figure for the story of Psychonauts 2. By leaving his sanctum to enter the mother lobe, his mind returned to its shattered state. Two shards of this broken mirror have already been collected. Now we are down to the final one, located in the mailroom. Clerk Crawler has locked himself inside and refuses to provide access to unqualified personnel. Luckily, Helmet Full Bear has occupied the body of Nick John Smith. The thinker print recognizes the mind and allows access. Littered around the floor is a spiral of letters. If we zoom in, we can see who some of them are addressed to. One to Helmet and addressed to the bottom of a frozen lake. Another is to Cassie with the delivery location of Stuck in Honey in Green Needle Gulch. The final one is to himself, located at Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp. At least the version of him that is complete and not fragmented like the one before us. It seems as though even this broken version of himself is fully aware of what is happening with the others, albeit in a subconscious way. We will see more of these as we explore the next Mindscape. For now, let's dive into Crawler's Correspondence. To keep with the theme, Raz is mailed inside the mind, delivered to a room with a writing desk, a typewriter, and a photograph showing the Psychic Six decorated. On the floor is a letter addressed to Bob Zanotto. It was sent to Tia's Greenhouse in Green Needle Gulch. Here is another example of Ford being aware of what is happening with his friends, despite possessing a fractured mind. What is interesting is the connection between all four of these letters. They refer to the four people who have not yet been saved. Compton has already been helped by Raz, but Helmet's body is still trapped at the bottom of the lake. Cassie is still held captive. Bob is drowning himself in misery, and his own mind is still shattered. I can only presume as each of these people are saved, these letters will vanish one by one. By the time Raz enters the central room of Crawler's correspondence, we are introduced to the main set piece, a giant mechanical version of Ford that is tasked with sorting the mail. Before we get into any of this level's symbols, mental vaults, or narrative relevance, it is important we pause and explore exactly what this machine is intended to represent. RoboFord is doing what we expect, sorting the mail. But the mail in question refers to more than just the correspondence that this level is named for. Don't care who you quoted, your feelings must get sorted. One interpretation is that RoboFord is a mechanism of Crawler's mind that filters and processes emotions or feelings. Some get sent to their proper place, some get thrown into the Dead Letters office, others fall into the fires to be burned. All of us have one of these inside our head. Let's take a look at one model of emotional processing to get an idea. Dr. Greg Henrique, a professor at James Madison University and author of A New Unified Theory of Psychology, describes a tripartite model that applies to this. I will be making small adjustments to the terminology for the purpose of clarity as we discuss it. This model is divided into three parts. The experiential self, the private self, and the public self. The experiential self is related to external stimuli, more specifically, the emotions we feel in response to stimuli. When we are locked in a room with a poisonous snake, we react to the stimuli with the emotion of fear. Different people will react differently to the situation, though. This leads us to the private self. To paraphrase Dr. Henrik's article entitled Understanding Emotions and How to Process Them, the private self is the narrator explaining and judging the core emotion. To put it simply, how we feel about it. While emotions and feelings are widely used interchangeably, there is a big contextual difference. Emotions are the unconscious response to stimuli, while feelings are how we consciously react to the emotion. These are shaped by our past life experience, memories, or belief systems. Two people can experience the same stimuli and emotion, but have different feelings on the matter. Upon seeing the snake in the room, the emotion of fear will induce stress. However, a person who was bitten by a snake as a child may develop severe anxiety. Unable to deal with the feeling, this person may freeze up. Another individual, who grew up with snakes as pets for example, may see the fear differently. The increased heart rate and stress being an indicator of the danger. They then determine the best course of action to deal with the threat. Courage is not the absence of fear, 
It is knowing how to deal with the fear and still keep moving. This leads us with the public self, which I'll relabel as actions. Not all feelings are acted upon. All of us have a filter set up to prevent us from acting on impulses from the private self. Things like directing one's frustration onto a difficult customer or laughing at a funeral. Briefly going back to Crawler's correspondence, RoboFord sorts the mail into three categories. One is the fiery chasm. We can interpret these as the impulses or emotions that are discarded. Things that are tossed away and legitimately forgotten. The dead letters office, however, are the feelings that we try to hide away, but they remain with us despite our best efforts to forget. We are unable to overcome these thoughts no matter how much we try to suppress them. The final category are the letters that are properly delivered. The last detail in the aforementioned model brings attention to the mental filters we have. The gap between the emotions and feelings is referred to as the Freudian filter. The gap between the feelings and actions is known as the Rogerian filter. Let's look at this one first. Named for the psychologist Carl Rogers, this is the process that makes us pause and ask ourselves, should I be doing this? All of us restrict how we behave to varying degrees of success, usually using a model of morality. This filter is learned behavior that can come from societal laws, religious decrees, or morality taught to us from a parent or a role model. At the end of the day, most of our impulses get filtered out and thrown into a metaphorical garbage disposal. We see this physically in Kroller's correspondence. While Raz is writing the letters across the storm of mail, or maelstrom, we come across this section of letters falling into the fiery chasm I just mentioned. Letters that are being discarded and ignored. The interesting detail here is Ford is associating this feature of his mind with the actions taken by Tsar Theodore and Lucy at the end of the war. A plaque right above it states that this is the Citizens' Complaint Department. All of the legitimate concerns from the Grilovians is discarded into the fire, in the same way the Rogerian filter discards impulses to prevent them from being acted upon. By changing the paradigm from an individual mind to states of a society, we see the exact same pattern play out. The feeling of the people of Grilovia are being filtered out by Tsar Theodore and Maligula preventing the feeling of the people becoming actions for the state to enact. The messages they are trying to send to their government are being ignored. A large part of this level is focused on this theme. Postcards and telegrams can be located throughout the mental world. Going along with the mailroom theme, we see a telegram exchange between Tsar Theodore and Lucy. The monarch pushes her more and more into the mindset that the voice of the people is something to be washed away. Two Lucretia mucks stop. Anti-war protests threaten peace. Stop. Great unwashed need a cold shower. Stop. For Grulovia. Tsar Theodore. Lucretia. Gentle rain's not enough to secure my reign. Stop being coy with the hoi polloi. Eventually, her actions in this pursuit led her to become more aggressive and authoritarian. Just like the mind develops habitual patterns of behavior when processing emotion, both she and Tsar developed a pattern of how to deal with the people. As we saw in Ford's follicles, the culmination of this was the drowning of Grilovia. From there, the people gave her the nickname of Mad Maligula, a title she accepted in a twisted sense of pride. They call me Maligula. Nah, oh, so serious. I take it as a compliment. So much, in fact. I can't remember being called by another name. In the same way, negative thought patterns can grow and grow with intensity, becoming a robotic pattern in our heads. Our personality becoming automated and reactive to stimuli rather than something we consciously control. Sometimes the dam in our head may break and we experience the consequences of these negative thought patterns. Sometimes, those around us are the ones who feel the consequences. Just like Lucy summoning rain to disperse the people caused the dam to break and drown all of the protesters. This level doesn't only focus on this drama, but Ford's connection to it as well. He was also affected by her spiraling negative thoughts. Other correspondence found in this mental world involves postcards between Ford and Lucy. They focus on the emotional turmoil Ford experienced while watching someone he loves become a monster. Dear Ford, 
We brought peace to Grulovia, but there is still unrest among the people. A little ungrateful, I think. Home soon, Lucretia. Lucy, haven't heard from you in a while. Send us a card, or better yet, come home. We miss you. Ford. Lucy, your last letter frightened us. You don't sound like yourself. We're just worried about you. Love, Ford, and friends. By looking at the mental vault entitled Lucy's Letters, we get an idea of what happened. Upon learning that her home country of Grilovia was invaded, she set out to help. With family still there, she does not think twice. Even after winning the war, the citizenry is in a state of unrest. As we saw in the postcards, Lucy eventually lost herself and became trapped in a dark personality. This personality was governed by an automated thought pattern. The root emotion responsible for this will be explored in a future episode. Ford's final correspondence he sends out is intended to summon back the kinder side of her nature, but it was never delivered. By that point, the nation had fallen. Krulovia no longer existed, so there was nowhere for the letter to go. Putting these ones aside, there was one message which is the primary focus of the mental world. As soon as Raz enters the mailroom, we are confronted with a letter with Ford's image as the postage stamp. Immediately, the Robo Ford directs it into the dead letter's office since it has no return address. The letter we attempt to reclaim from being buried by the Robo Ford is this love letter. Locked within this envelope is more than just words. Because this is a mental reality, this letter contains the emotions associated with the contents within. More specifically, the emotions experienced as a result of this message never being delivered. An emotion we see in the form of enemies right in front of the typewriter. An emotion that was not, if you pardon the pun, addressed properly. Regret. I wrote a letter once. Did I think I could stop a war? Ah, doesn't matter. I never sent it. Maybe it would have saved a thousand lives. Maybe just one. I wonder what would have happened if I'd sent that letter. But the regrets are not permitted to be mailed to the proper part of his mind. Instead, they are thrown into the dead letter's office thrown into the back of his head and prevented from being properly processed. We mentioned earlier that there are two filters, the Rogerian filter between the private and public self, but there's also the Freudian filter between the experiential and the private self. Roboford essentially plays the role of this filter. It processes and distributes these mental contents, either dealing with it in a healthy manner, into the waste bin with the other unneeded contents, or into the dead letter's office to be held onto but never resolved. This aspect of Crawler's correspondence is depicted as a robot since the process is largely automated. The Freudian filter reacts to learned life experience, memories, prior actions, personal philosophy, etc. As we perform the same emotional processing over and over, we develop a long-term association between stimuli and emotion, between emotion and feelings, and between feelings and actions. In a healthy mind, this automated response works out largely okay. It behaves like a factory machine that does its job and spits out a good product. But sometimes, this robotic system creates maladaptive emotional processes. The factory machine is broken and delivers broken products. In these cases, we feel as though we are defined by our emotions, unable to keep them in check, chained by their whims. When trapped in these automated loops, it can be common to look at the emotion itself as what's negative. But there are no good or bad emotions, only good and bad reactions to them. All of us feel fear, regret, envy, pride. It is how the Freudian filter help us respond to these emotions that is more important. If our inner mail sorter works properly, these emotions are channeled into positive action. If our robotic mental process fails to sort the mail properly, we get stuck in a maladaptive mental world. Feelings becoming our identity. All that can be done is live with it or fix it. Ford Crawler is stuck with the regret of allowing Lucy to become Maligula, feeling as though his inaction is partially responsible for the atrocity she committed. This feeling failed to be sorted properly, stuck inside the dead letter's office, unable to throw away the regret and unable to do anything to make it right. The mail can't be delivered, or thrown in the incinerator. 
With all of this in mind, the task of this world is to properly address this letter so that it can be delivered. Raz saves the letter from the RoboFord and relocates it to the typewriter. But several keys are missing, making it impossible for Crawler to properly address these emotions. Right in front of the typewriter, we see regrets appear. These enemies are directly associated with the attempts to address this letter properly. With Raz's help, the typewriter is repaired, the letter is properly addressed, and mailed out. This forces him to confront the truth. He regretted that he allowed her to go to war while in her mentally fragile state. He regretted that he didn't do anything to save her until it was too late. He regretted being unable to send this letter to her. But he must swallow a bitter pill. This letter, even if it was sent, would have accomplished nothing. The postcard that is sent back in response to his love letter tells him that Lucy is dead and she is never coming back. Addressed by Maligula. You see? The mail just doesn't matter. The entire reason that his real letter was never delivered is because Grilovia no longer existed. This postcard tells Ford that even if Lucy received his love letter in time, it would not have mattered. By then, the personality of Lucretia Mux was gone. The personality of Mad Maligula was all that is left. Both the nation and the person were still there. But the essence of Grilovia and Lucy were gone. Even if Maligula read the words, it wasn't being delivered to the right person. It was delivered to someone he didn't know. A twisted personality formed by the inability to process emotions and feelings that were summoned forth by war. If we went into Lucy's mind to witness her inner mail sorter, I wonder what it would have looked like. Part one of dealing with an emotional problem is confronting the source. Ford is forced to confront the fact that his letter would not have helped, that the source of his regrets are misplaced. It allows Raz inside of his brain and remove the final mirror shard. What did you say in that letter? Nothing important, really. Just that I loved her. She just wanted to help, but they, they pushed her too far. Well, how should we have known? It's not like she was marked fragile. But I thought I knew her and everything she held inside herself. Ah, I had so much to learn. I guess some packages are better left unopened. With all three pieces back together, we see the complete forward crawler reflected back to us. His memories coming together, the truth of the past coming back. Everything he attempted to keep buried bubbles up to the surface. Secrets that were hidden are being dug up. The details of all this will be explored further once Raz and Ford head to the graveyard to dig up the tomb of the sarcophagus. See you then. Oh no, I don't think you'll want to see this at all. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.